Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, February 1st, 2024. Let's get into it. So today's a bit different video, and I've had complaints on the channel about, man, you're all over the place. Sometimes you talk about geopolitics, sometimes you talk about gardening, sometimes you talk about working on your house. I mean, you know, it's I'm trying to do the best I can to help you in whatever way, shape, or fashion that I can. You know, I mean, do you say that you think that geopolitics helps you? Yes, it does. Understanding what's going on in the world is very important to yours and your child's and your, your, your future. Okay? It helps guide you into what to invest in. It helps to let you know when the next banking crisis is coming or when the next real estate crisis is coming, which is here now. You know, I, it helps. So understanding the world around you is very important, but at the same time, you know, house projects. Now, I make separate videos where I just do like a product analysis or something like that, and I don't talk about anything. But this is this is an all of the above video. So I want to get into because I was watching the Economic Ninja. I I don't know. I like his channel. He he gets off on tangents and stuff. But today he really hit me, and I uh, and I always just kind of flip around through YouTube and watch first part of a lot of people's videos, and if it gets into something. Uh, but I did want to talk about this because this related, man, I mean, it was, it was like uh, he, wrote, he did the video for me. And so I never knew what the term would be. But right now, Amazon is laying off uh, or quietly firing 27,000 employees. Google's uh, getting rid of 30,000. Uh, UPS is at 12,000. Uh, JP Morgan is having layoffs. So you can see that the, the narrative that you're being fed by the, uh, the Democrats or the Biden administration is a lie. It's all a lie. The economy is going down. And, uh, and a lot of people are getting laid off. And so I wanted to talk about quiet firing because, okay, you might be secure in your job, all right, but you might have a nephew or a, a son or a daughter, a young person that's coming up in the world and they're not going to understand what this is. And I wanted to relate some of my experiences to you or to them so that they can understand how they can take advantage of a quiet firing. All right. So the, my first story was uh, I was working for Ford Motor Corporation on their uh, uh, manufacturing. Okay. And I was writing all the software. Uh, we call it a computer integrated manufacturing. And that was all, uh, you know, I, I know that a lot of people don't know what the command line is. If you're in Linux and you can open up a prompt, and you can still open it up a prompt in Windows, you can type commands on the command line. Well, I had never, at that time, I'd never used Windows. I was, uh, I don't know, I was probably about 28, somewhere around there, maybe 30 or so. I'd never, never worked in Windows, never seen a, G, a GUI, you know. Uh, and so that was kind of an alien thing back then, but... but I was so good at programming and I was so good at working on the command line in Unix. And that was back when Unix was still the operating system. You know, and of course, now it's Linux. Uh, so uh, what happened was I got uh, that contract. I didn't realize my contract company was charging Ford Motor $110 an hour for my time. And I told Ford Motor, I said, well, just hire me, man. I mean, you could pay me $33 an hour because I loved the job. It was a great job. And, uh, and they said, well, written into your contract, we can't hire you for, for six months. And, and by that time, you know, who knows, management may have changed or whatever. And so I said, man, okay. So they, they terminated the contract. So I ended up back at my contract company. I'll name them out. It was an old company. They don't exist no more. They, they were bought out by TRW and later by Northrop Grumman. But anyway, it was BMW. And, uh, and so when I got into the office, you know, they sat me down in front of a PC I'd never seen a PC before. I'd always just worked on a terminal that was connected to a Unix server doing command line programming. You know, I wrote a lot of C programs, a lot of uh, uh, scripts that, that, that automated uh, all of the manufacturing. So when they sat me down, they said, well, you know, what can you do? I, I, I don't know what this is. I said, what, it, it, this is a, it's called a PC? And they were like, yeah, 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 it's a PC. It's, you know, there are many different facets to the computer world. I just, I'm just i kind of getting you into the, the mode here. And, and I said, well, I, I don't know anything about this. I said, but, uh, you know, I'm willing to learn. You know, I'm willing to try. 
And so we got into it and they realized that was a pretty damn useless tool. <laughs> Unless you're going to go back to college and study the Windows operating system. I didn't even know what a mouse was. I'd never seen a mouse before. I was like, well, damn, you know. And so they were going to get rid of me one way or another. They said, man, this guy, unless they could find me. The, now, the management did try to find me another contract in a Unix or a, a, a command line based uh, uh, contract. But at that time, they were kind of few and far between. It's kind of like being a mainstreamer back then main or a, um, a mainframe person. Uh, you can make a ton of money on a mainframe contract, uh, which I worked with people later on in life because uh, they're few and far between, too. But, uh, you know, if, if you get landed in a PC shop and you're a mainframer, you're not going to know what the hell you're doing. So basically what they decided to do was they just sat me at my desk and they didn't give me anything to do. And, uh, and so I would come to work day after day. They made me, you know, I had to be there on time, you know. And this is where when you're, when you're getting a quiet firing, this is what's so important. Make sure you obey the rules. You know, you got 10 days of vacation. Don't take any sick leave. You know, make sure you're showing up. And so I would show up on time, day after day, and they would sit me at my desk. And I, but I had the PC. They couldn't deny me that. So I, I bought books. I went out and I, to the library, and, and, and also I bought some books on about Windows and, and Access. You know, you, back then it was Microsoft Word. And I, I said, well, you know what? I'm going to learn how to use these things. I mean, because, you know, I am getting paid. I was getting paid a decent amount of money. And uh, so they, you know, they just thought, you know, if we don't give this guy any work, he's just going to quit. So I sat there at my desk and I studied and I would read the books and I'd flip through them. I just treated it like a college class. I was getting, imagine going to college and getting paid for it, right? So I just sat there and I, I just studied and, I, and, and eventually I got pretty damn good. I was a great access database uh, program. In fact, they, they actually put me out to some small businesses and I did some access work for them, which was fantastic at the time. Now, I also had some mentoring because some of the employees in that office kind of felt sorry for me because, and so they would help me out, you know, with my education because I would have questions and I would say, well, if I'm doing this in access, you know, what am I doing wrong here? This program should be working, you know, and, and so they would help me. But anyway, finally, in the end, they realized that they weren't going to run me out the door. So they finally had to fire me. And by firing me, they had to give me an, a, a severance package because they had no reason to fire me. I hadn't done anything wrong. I showed up to work on time. So that's what quiet firing is all about. So if you have a nephew or something and they're going through a quiet firing, you know, there's many ways that they can go about quiet firing. They can try to set you up. Uh, to make you angry so that you do something stupid. Uh, you know, uh, they can over, if you're under salary, they, they'll overwork you. You know, what they'll do is they'll give you, uh, that was another job that I had. That was at Toltex Corporation. Uh, they decided because they wanted to get rid of us. And so what they were doing was they were trying to work us, because uh, I was on the night shift and they would make us sit around for meetings at nine o'clock in the morning while my shift was over at 6.30. But we had to wait around for a meeting at 930, you know, and that's when I'd usually be asleep. And so what they were doing was they were trying to exhaust us. And that's why a salary job is so damn bad, you know, because if you got a salary job, you know, they can they can just say, well, if you don't do this, we're going to we're, we're going to fire. Well, fire me. You know, don't walk out the door. Don't give it to them, man. Don't give it to them. So uh, but let's get into some of the news uh so what, what, I guess the, the moral of the story is an under assignment of work is a blessing. Take advantage of it. Work on a side hustle. Okay, so you wonder, i just give you an example here. Why do I make these videos? I don't make no money off of these videos. You know, I've got 600 people watch them on, uh, you, well, I got 600 followers on X. Uh, I don't know, a few here, 300 or so on YouTube. You know, so you're saying, well, what's the point? Well, someday I want to work on my cybersecurity business and I'm going to try to get it going again. I wrote a thousand page book. It's still relevant today. So I'm building the side hustle because before I couldn't market it. That was the problem. The reason my business failed was marketing. It was all about marketing. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's get into the news a little bit. So, uh, you know, we have to understand that Israel is a strategic liability to the United States. And why do I say that? Because what they did in Gaza has infuriated the Arab world. Now, we've had three soldiers die in Syria. 
And I'm listening to the radio today, and it pisses me the freak off. They're all talking about, we got to retaliate. We got to strike Iran. You know, Iran provided the weapons. Well, guess what? We provided the weapons to Israel to exterminate the Palestinians. We provided the weapons to Ukraine to fight, you know, kill 500,000 uh, or, or, or let's see, how many Russians have died? I want to say 60,000 Russians. So does that mean that Russia needs to strike the United States because we provided all the weapons? Does that mean that because we gave all the weapons to Israel that the, the, the Arab countries need to strike the United States? Well, maybe so. It looks like that's what they're going to do. So now the neocons in the government are saying, well, let's go strike Iran because they gave them the weapons. We're doing the same damn thing. We sell weapons to Turkey. We sell weapons to Japan. We sell weapons to Germany. All, a lot of those weapons were given to Ukraine. Do you see the hypocrisy here? Do you see the lunacy, the stupidity? Now, if we strike Iran, this time they're ready. They've been preparing They've been preparing for about 15 years, and they are going to strike those U.S. bases, and we're going to see a lot of Americans die. And uh, I'm just saying, and, and look at the hypocrisy. Okay, do you think that Iran had any control over what those militias did in Iraq and, uh, and the Houthis or whatever? Oh, no, because Iran provided the weapons. You know, they, they, they have to be responsible. Well, the United States provided the weapons, and Israel did a genocide in Gaza, but yet the United States is not responsible. Do you see the hypocrisy here? All right, so let's just keep going. That was the dumbest thing. Then there was a congressman out of South Dakota. I think he's a senator, and I couldn't give you his name. I just heard on the radio today. He blamed illegal immigration on Putin, said it's a Russian, it's a Russian conspiracy that we're having so many illegal aliens coming across the border. Do you see the pattern, the narrative that they try to paint? They try to blame everything. You're tying your shoe wrong is, is, is a Russian conspiracy. I mean, my God, these guys, they, they can't even get off the narrative. It's so stupid, it's unbelievable. All right, so the, uh, the West thinks uh, uh, the offensive... Uh, oh, yeah, the West thinks that Ukraine can go on the offensive in 2025. The war's going to be over by 2025. <laughs> I can't believe it. So uh, what, how I got into this was that the Orban was telling the European Union, no way, I mean, they want to give like 51 billion euros to Ukraine and not know where the money goes. Ukraine's the most corrupt country in the world. Do you think much of that money is going to go to really help Ukraine? No, man. Zelensky's going to be drinking pina coladas down in the Bahamas, man. I mean, along with most of the, the upper brass, all those soldiers out there are just going to get killed. I mean, it's just, it's the stupidest thing. So Orban was right. Why did we give him $51 billion? And, he, and Orban was saying that it's a lost cause. Ukraine has lost the war. But anyway, so that's, that's why I got into this. The West thinks that, and, and this is, I guess this is the reason they're giving them 51 billion euros, because they think that the war is going to go on to 2025. It's not. It's not. Uh, farmers protest in Brussels. That's, uh, that's insane, man. I mean, I don't know. They're burning tires outside. Now, I don't know if uh, the, the European uh, officials will actually meet in Brussels because you know what? They don't give a shit about what the farmers think. So I think what they'll do is they'll just move the meeting to someplace else and tell the farmers that, you know, I'm, good, you know, I'm not holding up the finger. It's just that finger. So that's what they're going to tell the farmers. Uh, and they'll just move the meeting because they don't care about what the farmers think. They don't care what their people think. They can protest till they're blue in the face, just like here in the United States. You know, we got the, the convoy going down to Texas. Do you think that the Biden administration cares about that protest? Not at all. I'm sorry. You know, I, I think we're reaching the point where if you don't go kinetic, you're just not going to get anything out of it. These, uh, these, these lunatic uh, neocons and elites... They don't give a shit about you or me, okay? I'm just going to paint the picture for you. And no matter how much you protest, no matter how many uh, emails you send, how many letters you write, they don't care. All it is about lining their pockets. And, and, and basically, I think they hate the people of the United States. Most of Congress, certainly the Biden administration, all Democrats hate the United States. They hate working class people because they think that we're knuckle-dragging uh, Toad Hills or whatever. All right, so Ukraine attacked Crimea 
and uh, Russia was able to, just, to shoot down all the missiles, but they were able to sink uh, on a second uh, salvo a Russian ship. Now imagine, imagine if uh, a U.S. ship, once again, let's get to the hypocrisy just for a minute. Imagine if a U.S. ship was sunk by, uh, well, let's do, well, we'll go with Iran, for example, but I was going to go with Russia, was sunk by the Houthis, uh, and, and they might still do it. And, and of course, now they're going to say, well, it was all Iran. It was all Iran, you know. But do you think Russia's saying, because it was probably U.S. weapons that sunk the ship, okay? So do you think Russia's going to launch nuclear weapons on the United States? No. They know it was the U.S. that provided the weapons that sunk their ship. But they're not, they're not coming out saying we're going to destroy the United States. They're just saying, okay, fine, we'll just continue the war. Uh, well, there was a couple of videos where Zeluzhny is going up against Zelensky, Zelensky being the president and Zeluzhny is an old Soviet general. And, uh, and the, the, the feeling was Budanov, uh, who's... Uh, He's kind of a spook, you know. I mean, he'd be like a CIA uh, uh, intelligence officer, and uh, so he's, you know, he's more into. Uh, well, he's he's the one that's credited with sinking that ship, for example. He's more into the clandestine uh, operations, you know. Let's send some terrorists across the, into Russia, and you know, and blow up a couple of journalists or, or uh, attack a city, which is probably going to take place here in the United States now that we've got eight. 10 million uh, illegal aliens here. But I, uh, and so that's, that's why, and so now the news is uh, from, I'm just quoting from the military summary channel. I'd encourage you to watch that. He feels that he is going to replace Zeluzhny. Uh, so it looks like Zelensky uh, may get his, 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 his wish. Uh, let's, I don't have a video for you tonight, by the way. I'm sorry about that. I was out hiking all day. By the way, I'll be putting up a hiking video, if not tonight, uh, tomorrow. Uh, it's a, the Florida Trail from the Santos to the uh, Bike Trail. So just wanting to promote my future video. Uh, so this was another uh, uh, quiet firing that I went through. So I was in uh, Battle Creek uh, working for the National Guard, and I took a job in the computer department. Well, what happened was I threatened all of the other employees. Because I was a lot, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I was a lot smarter than they were. And when I came in, I guess I was going like gangbusters and saying, you know, hey, man, let, let's check this out. Let's do this. Let's do that. And they were giving me assignments that they didn't think I'd be able to do, and I would excel at them. And so eventually, uh, they, they, I was going to, the reason that I took the job was in corporate America at that time, you know, you had to go into work. You always had to be there on time. And, you know, I don't understand corporations want you fat, dumb, and sick, okay? And so this job gave me the opportunity. They had a gym where I could go during lunch and I could work out. And I thought, man, this is great. This is all I ever wanted. It was a huge pay cut for me. But I, the privilege of being able to work out for an hour during lunch or whatever. So what they did was, they to, once again, a quiet firing was they took away my gym access and told me I couldn't go to the gym no more because they didn't want me in that job. Now, eventually, I moved over to the electronic warfare uh, aspect, and that was a great job. So it all worked out in the end, but I'm just telling you, you know, once again, I, I could have just ridden that out because they, 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 what they had done, with, though, it was the worst job ever. And that, this is what they'll do another quiet firing uh, tactic is they'll, if you let them know the, the one thing that you hate the most, that's what they'll do to you. And so they put me on a help desk. And, you know, I don't mind working on a help desk as long as I can go out and help the people because it was a small base. You know, there's no reason that I couldn't go and meet people and say, you know, let's sit down and with your computer. No, they wanted me to do everything remote from inside a room where I had to sit at a desk and I had no access to the gym. It was like being in a little prison cell for eight hours a day. Uh, and so, yeah, they got me up. So, all right, let's keep going. Um, real estate is not selling in Central Florida. I got that news from a guy uh, He came over to do a termite inspection and he knows a bunch of people in the real estate industry here. Could have fooled me, man. I mean, I'm telling you, the houses and everything is going up around here. He says, but there, he knows a lot of people in the business that are hurting. So if we're hurting here in booming Central Florida, don't tell me there's not a real estate crisis coming. I'm going to tell you that right now. So here's another one for you. And I got to call the company and, and I'm not giving up on it. 
I do want to get a Bluetooth mic so that I can conduct interviews, you know, because with a Bluetooth mic, you can actually have two mics, one for me and the one for the person I'm interviewing, and then it records, and also I can do some videos where on my hiking videos, I can be well away, like 800 feet or so from the mic, hiking, and you know, and show me hiking out in Florida and talking to you at the same time. Well, the problem that I got, and this is like buying them damn solar lights that go outside your house and stuff, is... Okay, what happens when the battery goes bad? Are you just out? Because these mics, I think they're like $380 or something like that. So if the battery goes bad and I'm out a $380 piece of equipment and I can't replace the battery, well, that, that's screwed up, man. I mean, how, how many years do you think the battery's going to last? These are just lithium-ion batteries. And so just like them solar lights that everybody buys, well, guess what happens? If you can't replace the batteries, you just throw away the whole light fixture. It's designed obsolescence. So I got to find out about the batteries for this DJI mic and see if I can replace it. If I can replace the battery, I'll get it. But if not, I, I don't going to buy a piece of junk that's going to be in three years. It's going to be, a, you know, a, a paperweight that I'm just going to have to throw in the garbage. Plus, it's bad for the environment. All these lithium batteries, you don't want them just throwing them out there in the dump. So speaking of that, I, I, I was at the, that was the reason that I went for a hike today. And, and on the video, I talk about the fact that I recycle my aluminum cans. And I have a can crusher. You probably want to get a can crusher. And I crush the cans until I get a certain weight. And there's a place nearby the trail that I like to hike. And take them in there. I get, I get five bucks for the cans. It doesn't take out a few minutes to just go there. And I know that that way the cans are recycled. If you just stick them in that bin outside, they probably just end up in the dump anyway. Uh, open borders. Uh, the Democrat open borders that all Democrats want are starting to have an impact. Uh, so we, we're seeing uh, uh, some, some instances uh, where things are happening. Uh, you know, as we knew, there's going to be terrorist attacks because that's what the Democrats want. Uh, they want open borders. They want as many people in the United States here illegally as possible. But uh, today, some, well, maybe it might have been today or yesterday, some New York officers were attacked. And, uh, and you know what, I, I didn't understand, because they, 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 evidently it was like eight illegal aliens just beat the crap out of them. If you want to watch the video, it's on X. And uh, I didn't understand why they didn't pull their, their weapons out. Well, uh, number one, in New York, they would get prosecuted and probably be in jail. And number two, uh, as long as, I guess, they didn't feel their life was threatened, even though they ended up in the hospital, I guess they felt like they should take the beating. Uh, I don't know what I would have done in that situation. I, I think I would have, well, I mean, you've got, I didn't understand. I mean, I assume they have tasers and they had billy clubs. And I didn't see in the video, maybe it was just too overwhelming uh, an attack. It happened too quick for them to get those weapons out, you know, because you can hit them with the taser. And there's also some other uh, non-lethal weapons. I'm going to tell you what, if I was an officer this day and time, uh, there's some, some pepper spray things. Uh, I can't remember. You hear it on Sean Hannity advertising it. To, uh, God dang it, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called, but it sounds like a pretty good non-lethal weapon. That might have been something they could have used. Uh, so, uh, and then uh, here's another uh, thing on the quiet firing. So employees working from home are now being required to go into the office. Well, why do you think that is? Because they want them to quit. <laughs> they've, been, they've been happily working at home, petting the dog, you know, behind their computer, getting more work done. You get more work done from home than you do in the office. But now that they're going to require them to go into the office, a lot of them might quit. Uh, talking about the garden real quick. This is called the planting ring. I bought this. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use it. Because I figured if I put this down around the plant in my rock gardens, then I could put mulch down in here. And, and when I fertilize and water, it just stays within this ring. So I don't know. I'll let you know the jury on that. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than, than what I wanted. And I didn't know it would have this. Because this is obviously made to go into the ground. This, this little ring on the bottom. Well, unfortunately, with my rock... I have a barrier, and unless I'm going to cut the barrier out to that size, which I'm not going to do, uh, that's just going to sit on top of the rock, so it may or may not work. Let's get into a couple of X posts real quick. Uh, Simplicius the Thinker, I always like his. Battlefield science has been advanced in the SMO. It was discovered that soldiers with a big gut have a fire, fire higher survivability rate 
due to the slanted nature of their armor, just like in World War II where the T-34 pioneered angle armor to deflect shells. So I, I like this tweet or this X post because, you know, that was one of the reasons that the Army kept me out of um, military uh, police school because they said my gut was too big. And uh, even though I was second on the, the physical uh, test, so as far as jogging, push-ups, uh, what is it else? Oh, sit-ups. Jogging, push-ups, and sit-ups. In Marine Corps, you got to do pull-ups. But uh, so, yeah, and so they said, well, you know, we measured your gut, and that, that means that you can't, can't go, you can't advance. I had no possible way to advance. This was uh, Elon Musk. Um, what the heck is going on? I agree with him. This is breaking. 150 Democrats vote against a bill to deport illegal aliens caught while driving drunk. <laughs> the Democrats are batshit crazy, aren't they? It, aliens beat the hell out of two cops. They, you know, they're driving around drunk, and yet the Democrats, they got it. I mean, they got to stay. I mean, and by the way, those guys that beat the hell out of the cops, they were out of jail within like six hours or something. It was crazy. Uh, breaking. Uh, this is Megatron. Uh, just real quick. The genocide in Gaza appears to be near and it's in. The parties in Paris seem to have reached a deal. Egypt and Qatar are the meteors to the agreement. Israeli media says that Qatar is preparing to announce a ceasefire on Saturday. So we can hope. I, I, I'll believe that with a grain of sand. I, well, we already knew about this. If you didn't know, uh, Saudi Arabia has officially joined BRICS along with a couple of other nations. This was a video about it. I won't show you that. Uh, let's see. This is Sprinter. News appeared on the internet that Germany demanded that Nigeria end relations with Russia, Russia, threatening to sever relations and close its embassy in the country. If Germany wants to close its embassy, so be it. <laughs> we, we will not beg anyone. We, we want them to leave. Let them, let them leave. Who needs Germany? The, the Europeans have brought nothing to Africa but the exploitation of our resources, our wars, terrorists, and our dictators, said the head of Na Nigeria's uh, Transitional Military Council. And I, I'm going to try to pronounce it. Abd, A-B-D, Al-Rahman Chiani, in an interview with local television. I to I, well, who couldn't agree more? I mean, we... France, uh, Germany, everybody, all they did was ever steal the damn African resources. The Russia's the only one that seems to want to treat them fairly. So I guess that's it for today's video. Peace out. Stay free. If you wish to follow me other places, I post on many topics. My main interest is geopolitics. To follow me for geopolitics, I am that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. Under the playlist, Watching the World Burn. On Rumble, my channel is simply The Burn. I also post all my videos on X. That handle is That Cyber Sec Guy. That Cyber SEC Guy. I'm also on Getter and True Social. On Getter, it's the same as X. That Cyber Sec Guy. And on True Social, it is That Cyber Security Guy. I also do minimal postings on Telegram at the world burning the world burning on telegram i'm limited to two gigabytes there so i don't post often unless it's a short video i also do videos on outdoor activity because i'm into of hiking mainly but it's outdoors with kirk on rumble that is my main channel for outdoor activity but i also have a playlist on youtube called hiking biking and camping in the united states lastly i do reviews and tutorials and commentary on various products on Rumble, it is just simply that cybersecurity guy. That's my catch-all for any video that doesn't fit in geopolitics or outdoors. On YouTube, it is reviews, tutorials, and commentary on products. Hope you can follow me other places. Peace out. Stay free.